So I get sent a lot of messages by email and on social media. Unfortunately, I can't reply to every single one of them. But one of the common questions I get asked is, how do I keep my jumping spiders still, stop them from moving while I'm doing my photography? The simple answer in my case is, my spiders are used to me photographing because I'm always testing lenses, I'm always testing different lighting setups. But in this video, I'm going to give you one simple tip to help you photograph your jump spider if it is a very skiddy spider and keeps running away. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. Just like I said in the intro, I'm going to give you one tip for photographing a very skittish or timid jumping spider. Typically, I will put a jumping spider onto a leaf or some sort of scene and my jumping spiders most of the time will sit there because they know me, they're used to it, they don't run away. In your case, it may be different. Your jumping spider might be running all over the place. So this is a video for you. So this is a natural dried lotus flower. It's used quite commonly in decorative flower arrangements. And what you'll notice is it has a lot of little holes in it. And what I found is jumping spiders like to go inside these holes. And these holes are what we're going to use to photograph our jumping spider. Now, first of all, I'm going to get my specimen holder out. And I'm going to put this dried lotus flower onto my specimen holder. And then I'm going to arrange it in such a way that when I'm leaning on the desk here, it's flat towards the camera. So now I'm going to get my jumping spider out. And as you know, in most of my videos, I get my jumping spider out, then I set the camera up. Gives the spider time to settle down. Now let's get this little female out. Okay, so you can see that this spider is very skittish. She's a younger spider. She's a pale variant of the regal jumping spider. She is a female. But you can see how she won't keep still. She's all over the place. And what I'm going to do is just going to place her now onto this seed pod. And again, as always, I'm going to wait just a few moments for it to settle down. And I'm going to turn the seed pod towards my secondary camera so you can see what she's doing. What's going to happen is she's right now, she's like, what the hell is going on? You know, I've been taken out of my home. I've been messed with. She's looking for a place to hide. And hopefully she will see one of these little seed pods and go and hide in it. Now, because jumping spiders have a very good eyesight, she is most of the time going to turn around and face outwards because she wants to see what's happening outside. See if there's any predators coming her way. So you can see how she went inside that seed pod and then turned around. So if you can find something in your scene where the spider can hide and look out towards you, that will make your spider feel safe and it will stop running around. So now I can photograph this little beauty I can just turn it around. And by the way, I have my lower lens back. When I say my lower lens, I mean my lower lens. Yeah, they actually put my name. They engraved my name onto my lens, which is fantastic. I want to thank Laura for doing that. And uh, for the people that are following along, it appeared there was a, um, a malfunction with the focusing ring, but they fixed it. The focusing ring is absolutely solid again, so I will be using my lower lens. So I'm going to go to about one... 1.25 magnification on this. I'm at 1 16th power on my flash. So for my settings, I'm going to go to 1 1 60th of a second on my shutter. We're going to use 7.1 on my aperture. Nice aperture for this uh, lower lens and ISO 400. I'm going to take a series of shots and then I'm going to focus stack them. So I'll just dump my chair out the way. And I'm going to get low. Low down so I'm equal height to her. And at the same time, I can brace myself on the table so it's nice and steady. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus at the very front of the seed pod, take a picture, move my camera slightly forward, take another one, take another one, and we'll get that until we get the back of her head. We're basically eyes that are on the side of her head in focus. The rest of it, I'm not really too bothered about. Have you checked out my video tutorial for photographing your pet jumping spider? Rose, how to photograph your pet jumping spider is a two error video that covers all of the details that I use to go from concept to print for photographing your jumping spider. But it doesn't just work on your pet jumping spider, you can use all the techniques in this video to photograph wild jumping spiders. Check out the link in the description below or go to stuartwood.com. Now, back to the video. 
So she's moved into uh, this hole here. She's in the middle, which is quite nice. So there is our final shot edited in Lightroom using my Macro Presets 2021, which will be released very soon. So there you go, that's my quick tip. Find somewhere or a scene where your jumper spider can hide inside and feel comfortable, and she will sit there all day and let you photograph her. I was going to cut the cameras and start editing, but I thought I would add this little extra bonus here on how to get your jumping spider out of these little crevices. So I'm just going to use my syringe that has the end cap on and I'm going to nudge it very gently. You can see there, she just pops straight out. And quite often, if you put the scene next to the enclosure, they will most likely run into the enclosure. Let's, uh, let's get her out now. You see there? How easy that was. Don't try and force your jumping spider to do anything if she's going to sit there and she's not going to come out without you literally poking her because I'm not actually touching her with the syringe. It's only by her and it just says to her, hey, you know, I'm going to move because you're getting too close. That's what she thinks. So that's all you need to do to get them back into their enclosure. So that's it for this shoot. One quick tip for getting shots of your skittish jumping spider and a tip to get them back into the enclosure. So what did you think of the final image? Let me know in the comments below. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video and as always I'll see you on the next one. I get sent a lot of messages and unfortunately I can't answer every single one of them personally. But one of the... <laughs> Honestly, I can speak good English, okay? Just that whenever the camera's on it's uh, hard. But in this video I'm going to give you one little tip that can help you capture your jumper spider if it is it almost at it but in this video i'm going to take but in this video i'm going to, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, uh. but in this video i'm going to give you one little tip that can help you photograph your jumper spider is <laughs> hello my name's stuart wood and welcome to this video now just like i said in the intro i'm going to give you one quick tip for photographing in the for photographing your jumper spider if it is a very timid or uh, uh, skittish, that's the word I'm looking for. So if you can find some sort of a scene there where blah, blah, blah. So if you can find some sort of a scene where there's a natural crevice, 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 I can't speak English. So if you can find some sort of subject in your scene that has a natural hole or crevice, <laughs> let's change the script. And of course, my batteries are flat.